This game works off of D6s, which is the kind of dice you can find in most any board game. It's called Lasers and Feelings. That's right, it's not a book, it's a single page. There's not even a back to it. This is a sci-fi adventure where the GM has no prep. You can make characters right as you sit down, explain all the rules, and do an entire one-shot around a campfire if you want to. It's that simple. So let's jump into it. You are the crew of the interstellar scout ship, the Raptor. Your mission is to explore uncharted regions of space and encounter as many space dangers as you can get into within a couple hours of gameplay. Let's get started by creating characters. The first step is for everybody to choose a style for their character. Some options include alien, android, dangerous, hotshot, intrepid, savvy or sexy. Next, everybody chooses a role for their character. There's no reason why you can't have multiple players with the same role. Some options include a doctor, an envoy, an engineer, an explorer, a pilot, a scientist, or a soldier. Next, every character will choose a number between two and five. A lower number means that you are better at lasers, and a higher number means that you are better at feelings. So. Five means you're really good at feelings. Two means you're really good at lasers. And numbers in between mean that you're just on that gradient, not choosing to fully lean in any one direction necessarily. How does the rolling work? We'll get to that in a bit. There are only two attributes for the entire game. Things that are lasers focused are things like cold logic or literally firing off bullets, piloting a ship in dangerous situations. Things that are feelings based are more passionate. They are more like trying to convince somebody to come to your side. Diplomacy, perhaps. Every character has the same equipment. You don't need to memorize the things on this list. Really, this game is just about allowing you to have a space adventure and to have the tools to do so. Some of the examples from Lasers and Feelings suggest having a consortium uniform with a built-in vac suit for spacewalks, a super sweet space phone camera communicator scanner thing. It does everything you need. And of course, you have a variable phase pistol, which maybe is set to stun. Every player has the same goal, and that goal is to get into crazy space adventures. Every character can have their own goal. To become the new captain, to meet sexy aliens, to shoot bad guys, find new worlds, solve new space mysteries, or maybe you're just gonna keep being awesome. Next, the characters will create their ship. We are aboard the interstellar scout ship, the Raptor, but what about the ship makes it interesting and will change it for this gameplay session compared to the next. As a group, everybody will choose two things that the ship is really good at and one thing that it's not. It could be fast, nimble, well-armed, have powerful shields, superior sensors, a cloaking device perhaps, or it could be a fighter craft. A fighter craft certainly seems to encompass some of the other things I've already listed here, uh, but I still allow it to be chosen anyway and we figure it out as we go. As far as choosing one problem that the ship has that might influence your adventure, the ship perhaps is a fuel hog. Maybe it has horrible circuit breakers where all the panels are self-destructing as soon as you get hit once. Or there is a grim reputation. This one's a fan favorite. So as for rolling the dice and tying them to attributes, how does that work? This game works off of D6s, which is the kind of dice you can find in most any board game. If you are rolling a lasers roll, then you are trying to roll over your character number. If you are rolling a feelings roll, you will be wanting to roll dice under your character number. You will always be rolling at least one dice. Your GM might allow you to roll an extra die if they believe that you are prepared somehow for this roll, perhaps by something you set up earlier through clever thinking, or you just have enough time to think about what you're doing and you're not under intense pressure. He might also be given an extra die if your character is an expert at something doesn't necessarily mean that your number reflects if you're an expert, but more so if you are piloting a ship and you are the pilot, then you probably are an expert. 
You also will be given an extra die if somebody is helping you in a task. Let's use an example. Let's say that you are rolling feelings. You are trying to roll under your number. Let's pretend that my character has a four as their character number. I roll several dice. None of them are under a four. That means that I have failed. This did not go the way I wanted, and now we'll see what the consequences are. If I have a single die that is under my number, then it's a partial success, usually with some kind of minor consequence. If there are two dice under my number, it's a standard success. Things go the way I had hoped. If there are three or more die that are under my number, that is a critical success, and I might get some kind of an extra benefit. Ah, but what if you roll your number exactly? What if I roll a four? If I roll a four, that means I get laser feelings. Pew, pew, pew. Not only does that mean that it is a success, but additionally, I may ask the GM a meta question. What kind of meta questions? I can be asking them things that maybe my character wouldn't have otherwise been able to get to the bottom of as easily. And it helps the game flow along a little bit easier, especially considering that this is a very improv heavy game. I could ask the GM, how do I get this person to do what I really need them to do? Or something like, what should I be on the lookout for? What is it that is really going on here? Who's behind this? Let's talk a little bit about what it takes to run this game from the GM's perspective. There is a space adventure table which you may elect to roll on, or you can pick and choose whatever just strikes your fancy. Examples of whatever kind of adventure you might roll up are as follows. Cyber zombies are going to synthesize the alien artifact, which will reverse time. Or the Hive Armada is going to bond with the Void Crystals, which will destroy a solar system. I know, it's a bunch of nonsense, and that's what's great about it. This is a funny sci-fi adventure. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece of storytelling, it just has to be silly and fun. Use whatever inspires you and run with it. You don't have to get the science right. It's gonna be great. I know, it's a bunch of nonsense, and that's what's great about it. This is a funny sci-fi adventure. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece of storytelling. It just has to be silly and fun. Use whatever inspires you and run with it. As a GM, you'll probably wanna start off with something simple. Introducing the threat somehow through some kind of narrative. Either showing them through a situation that the players are already caught up in, or perhaps having them be hailed by a captain from the consortium uh, main ship or something. You'll then wanna show maybe some side effects of the kinds of chaos that's being caused by the situation. Really grab the player's attention, bring them in and have them want to solve whatever the situation is on their own accord for their own reasons. Along the way, the GM will call for the players to make lasers or feelings rolls. That will dictate how the actions that they are trying to achieve work out or don't work out, and it'll help drive the narrative forward. Eventually, there will probably be some kind of a big bad or a main focus point where the story comes to a head and the players can hopefully come out victorious in the end. You may have noticed that there is no health tracking or damage dealing necessarily in this game. That's intentional. You don't really have to worry about it. Just relax and make it up as you go. If there is a firefight and some NPCs are taken out, great, they're taken out. If the players are not succeeding, then maybe they are taken out for a turn. Have the players maybe have to redirect what they're trying to do when they are not succeeding, rather than have them take damage and not be able to play anymore. If they are losing a firefight, I tell them that this is not working out, they are pinned down, and maybe they need to find a way to escape or hack their way through a side door or maybe teleport away or or something else, who knows? But they need to find a different way around because outright combat is just not working in that situation. And as a GM, ask your players questions like, have you ever encountered this alien before? And if so, how? Tell me a little bit about that. And it'll help bring some backstory in where there probably wasn't a whole lot of to begin with. 
Anyway, this has been a one-page tabletop role-playing game by John Harper called Lasers and Feelings. Thank you very, very much for listening to me chatter about it. I have run this game many times. It's just a load of fun. I have even once run this around a campfire, like I said. It's that easy. Players just need some dice and it can be done on a phone if they want to. It's great to just pull out randomly when people want to play a game and not have anything prepped and they don't really want to learn anything complicated. So this has been Lasers and Feelings. I am Gaiety and thank you for watching this episode of Fatal.